Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now, time and time again, every time I do something different on this car, I find the next weak link. And at the moment, it's the diff. Now I've been through several diffs, let's be honest. And in this episode, we're finally gonna be putting in a diff that I may not break, or I may still. But hopefully we've got a better chance of keeping this one in one piece. What's the point in having teeth if you don't brush them, eh? That is right, okay, so in this episode, what we're gonna do is you're swapping out the diff. Now, I've done a bit of research and there is a patrol diff that's built, it's called the H260. Now, that is the larger diff they use in some of the 4.5s and the 4.8 patrols. It's got a larger pin and pin and ring in, ring and pin in gear set in it. So, I'm gonna be taking my diff out, which is fully braced and everything, turfing that one off and getting a new H260. So, I've got a guy coming around pretty soon to drop one off and then we should be starting with a fresh slate. Now, Harrop do make an e-locker for them as well. They're pretty rare, but they do make them. Um, and then I'm gonna be doing my own brace kit on it because it's such a rare, odd size diff, they don't make brace kits for them either. So, in this episode, we're gonna be bracing it, locking it, getting it in the patrol, and hopefully doing more skids. No, we don't do skids on this channel. That is definitely not what we're doing. Alright guys, so here it is. This is the new H260 diff. Now I've already gone and pulled it apart. So the boys came around the other day, we swapped the diffs over and I've already pulled out the center, the axles and got everything pretty much disassembled, ready to start the brazing side of things. So for a start, obviously the housing width and all that's the same. It's just got much fatter axles, a bigger ring and pinion. Obviously the pumpkin is like huge, humongous. Actually I'll drop a shot up um, of the centers, so because I've got one of the old Harrop lockers, and I'll compare that to the new center, the LSD that's in there. You can just see how much bigger those gears are. So they really, if I can break one of these, I'm doing well. So what we're gonna do today is pretty much clean up this housing. I wanna grind back all of the crap that's on here. Now, like I said earlier, they don't make brace kits for these, so what I'm gonna do is just use some RHS. I've got some, I think it's like 7,520 um, and some 50 by 100 and pretty much plan to just do a small brace across the bottom there and then just a bit of a ramped up chunk across the back and sort of tee it into this pumpkin here. They do make those pumpkin bash guards, but I don't think I'm gonna really need that on the back. It's something that you really want on the front because obviously you wanna be going forward. Um, I might weld a little ring on the sump plug as well because that was kind of damaged. The one that I pulled out was horrible, so I need to get a new one of them and really put one of those rings around there to protect that. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. Bit of hit and miss, I'm just gonna pretty much wing it as I go. Like it's trying to just, I don't know, design the thing with a bit of cardboard, shape it, grind it, make it all fit, tack it up, and then weld it. As I said earlier, how heat will affect the warping of stuff. Here's an example here. So this isn't even welding. This is just grinding, purely grinding. And you can see, well, hold on a second. And you can see how much it's warped just from the heat of the grinder there. So just goes to show that heat plays a massive role when it comes to um, torsion and tension in metal. So we don't want that to happen to our diff. So it's all about keeping things rigid and tacking it along the way. So stuff like that doesn't happen. But anyway, got to keep cutting across that line and this should fit on the diff mint. I pretty much finished just mocking up this first bracket here. So this brace, I pretty much spent a bit of time getting it to fit properly. I did one and it was pretty atrocious. So I ended up doing another one and noticed that you, you kind of have to come down here and then back up. There's a bit of a bend in it, um, the way that it swells here when it comes to the pumpkin. But I've pretty much got it all cleaned up now, grinding back, um, ready to tack on. So I'm gonna tack this one on here and then work around and do the rest. Um, and once it's all pretty much tacked up, then we'll go and do a full weld, but just doing it piece by piece at the moment, nice and slow, get everything set up in place where I'm happy with it. Um, and then you pretty much commit when you get to the end there. So, oh, by the way, Bill and I bought merchandise. We actually sell these work shirts. So they've got 
bought up with spanners, not spoons on the back. And um, perfect for when you're welding your stuff, because obviously you don't want welders flash, because I've had that a few times, and it hurts more than a bloody sunburn, let me tell you that. Okay, all right. Now after that, we've made an absolute mess in the workshop. There's cardboard everywhere, there's grindy dust everywhere, but we got there in the end. Now I spent actually quite a few hours making all this fit because there's a few little bit, tricky bits and pieces to cut in and out to get around a lot of this bracing on the bottom section, but that back piece is on and tacked on. Now we've got the other section on. So now what I wanna do now, when it comes to welding a diff, obviously a massive thing is heat. Whenever you create heat in a weld, it's gonna wanna warp, it's gonna wanna kind of bend towards that weld point as it cools. So you can get all technical and, and preload the diff where you kind of put it on, you know, on a flat bench, strap it down to a couple of shims and, and kind of, you need to pre-calculate that preload and work out how much it's gonna to wanna to come the other way, which is kind of impossible because it all depends on the heat of your weld, how many stitches you do, how long you weld each section for, um, so many different scenarios. So. For me, the easiest way, simplest way, is to just minimize heat. That's essentially how you're gonna minimize the amount of warp and twist in the axle. So a good idea is to tack everything up first. So that's what I'm gonna do first. So everything's kind of in place and not gonna move. And then just go from one end to the other and keep moving. And going from the outside in will help reduce that warp as well, because from the inside, it's already gonna to wanna to start to bend as you go out. But when you're on the outside, at least the strengthening's happening as you come in and really just do maybe like an inch at a time, maybe a couple of inches of weld, let it cool, go to the other side, let it cool, and just really do it slowly. And that should minimize the amount of warp um, in the diff. So that's what we're gonna do now, um, and that should finish all the bracing. There's one more little section I wanted to do, um, we'll get onto that next, but it was thanks, thanks to some of the Instagram followers. Um, I think Manny and a couple of other blokes um, suggested this as well, obviously being a massive diff is to actually shave the bottom of the um, housing off because it's a lot bigger, you're gonna lose that ground clearance. So you can gain some of that back by trimming this here. So I might look at doing that next, but for now, let's get all this bracing done, tacked up, welded fully, and then ready for that next step. All right, so late last night, I finished up putting that plate in there, so I've welded it up. This morning, I just wanna do a little bit more cleaning up, um, just finishing off some of the shaping around here to make it look all right, ready for paint. Um, and then I think I'm gonna take it somewhere locally just to get it coated, get some black on there and get it sorted. Pretty soon, I'm getting some um, rust proofing done on the chassis and the diff, so it'll all get properly done then. But for now, I just wanna get it coated so it's not any bare metal. Um, protect all the welds and everything on there. Got a drip coming up, so we'll give it a whirl. And then um, the lock is meant to be arriving hopefully today or tomorrow, so stay tuned. Once this thing's painted, we'll start working on that center, get the old LSD out and put the new Harrop E-locker in there. And then it's pretty much ready to put the thing together and assemble it, see how bloody bent the thing is after all this, um, get it in the car and hopefully we won't be smashing diffs anymore. Famous last words. All right, so while that diff's off getting coated, I had the delivery from Harrop here. So we've gone the e-locker again, of course. Now, I'm gonna install this in the diff center while they're doing that um, coding. So I have got a full video of a locker install. I've done that previously, so I'll link that down below. So we won't go into super detail again because it's the same sort of process, um, but we'll just shoot this thing in there. What I will show you though is the difference between this H260 and the old smaller version. I think the H233 diff. So you can see the comparison there of what, what the size and why this diff's gonna be so much stronger. So. Let's get the old center disassembled, get the LSD out and start putting this locker in. All 
Alright, so I just finished disassembling the um, old center now. <sighs> Had to get pretty bloody creative getting that cram wheel off because obviously these bolts get put in with Loctite usually um, and by the looks of it, a whole lot was caked on there. So. Had to get a little bit creative with the um, press there and a bar on the opposite side to kind of crack them and then finish them off with the rattle gun. So now that the old center's out, so the old LSD, straight in the bin. Well, not really, it's probably worth some money. Actually, if you want it, send me a message because it's for sale. Um, so now what we're gonna do is sort out this locker. So what I've essentially got, obviously it's the Harrop E locker. Now, I did have to get some bearings to match this for the H260. So what we'll do next is we'll press these um, carrier bearings in um, and then we're going to put the crown wheel on and tension that up. So what's really cool actually with the Harrop kit here, it actually gives you all the bearing cap torque, um, your crown wheel torque settings. Now, I did cross-reference them with the Nissan um, owner's manual as well, so you just double check that, but they do have a guide here as well, so that's really cool. Um, so get the crown wheel on there, tension that up, and then, yeah, bearings on and we can start putting it back inside the carrier. But before we do that, we do need to drill the hole for the um, cable for the air locker. So that's what we're doing next. And then it's um, getting on to setting it up. All right, so we finished putting the bearings there. I used the bearing press to put the new ones on. So they're all um, done up, make sure they're fully seated, that's important. Um, what we also had to do was put the little grommet hole in. So I looked at the instructions. Uh, yes, I do read the instructions every now and then. But 11.5 millimeter hole, that's something you've got to drill in, obviously for the electrodes, um, not the electrodes, the wires to run the electromagnet. Um, so I've drilled that, and now it's pretty much time to put the whole diff center into the housing. Um, nip everything up and then put that grommet through and then it's really just tensioning, talking it all and then we'll get into the backlash. Like I said, with that other video I did, I went in a bit more detail about that but I'm gonna put some bearing blue on the actual ring gear um, and, and measure the, the way it's feeling. You want it to sort of sit in the middle of the gear, not too far out, not too far in. Set your backlash, which is also in the uh, manual, which I think there's the one in here as well. It should be about point, yeah, 0 0.15 to 0 0.2 millimeters. So, I got myself a feeler gauge, actually this one here. So picked this up the other day because I did have one in Perth, but left that with dad. So this is a real precision device. Like it does to the 0 0.01 millimeter. So we want 0.2 mil of backlash. So it comes with a magnetic stand. So you hook that on there, get everything set up onto the gears and you measure one side, get it right, measure, flipped at 180, measure the other side, make sure it's all reading true. And that's pretty much setting up the diff. So there's a bit of few like, probably half hour to an hour of just mucking around getting that right. And then once it's all set up, make sure everything's tensioned, everything's got locked tight, and then that whole housing go back in the diff and back in the car. And I'm going to Cruiser Park uh, this weekend, so let's hope it all goes together easy. <laughs> all right, we've got the center all sorted out, tensioned up, backlash and preload sorted, and we've dropped it in the top of the diff here. Now, I got it coated, now you're probably wondering why, Sam, why didn't you paint the diff yourself? And it's because it's not an actual paint. So we've got Dean down at the detailing center. He's actually gone and put a rust proofing on here. Now, living in the Sunshine Coast, or in fact, if you drive your four wheel drive anywhere on the beach, salt is an absolute killer. And I've seen too many cars here that are just stupidly rusty. Chassis, diffs, everything. So I wanna get this thing fully rust proof starting with this diff. So instead of going and just chuck some paint on there, we've gone straight for the rust proofing. So I've dropped the center in. I just gotta hook up all the brake lines because I took them off obviously. So put all the brake lines on, axles in, um, rotors and calipers on, and then pretty much get the thing underneath the car and then test drive it. Hook up all the suspension, obviously make sure the locker works, all the brake lines, gotta bleed the brakes, do all that stuff. So I'm just gonna spend the next couple of hours sorting all that out. I'll get back to you when this thing is well in. Hello guys and welcome to Built Not Bought HQ. Make sure to click on the far left to subscribe to the channel. Click down below to see the latest episode if you missed it. And don't forget our merchandise on our website. See you in the next episode.